All right, I have some really good news tonight uh, dealing with batteries, homemade batteries. And uh, I've always wanted to make a, a, a good, easy, safe, homemade, rechargeable cell. And I've had a few slight successes with it, but today I was really successful. And I wanted to sh uh, pass it on. Uh, John Bedini has a bunch of people following his work with the alum in the um, lead acid battery. They take the sulfuric acid out and they change it with a distilled water and alum. And uh, they're using the motorcycle batteries that come without the acid in them and they're converting these little motorcycle batteries. But before I spent the money I thought I'd do a little testing and it was highly successful so I thought I'd pass it on. The first step was I found this solder that I believe is 50% tin, 50% lead. It was in a, a dollar store and uh, I could tell it wasn't normal because it was gray and I had tried to make a cell like this using the 60-40 um, flux solder that you get at the electronic store and it didn't work. It didn't work at all. But this stuff did work and it's mostly lead probably and I made this little cell here. And you can see how this is the chocolate color that's supposed to happen and this is the gray. This is the differential between the two <coughs> lead plates. And it worked like a champ. I mean, the thing just really, really worked good. And uh, I had to condition it, like uh, John mentioned, uh, but I didn't use the sulfuric acid. I just used distilled water and that uh, aluminum sulfate um, alum, the McCormick's um, pickle, pickling alum that you get in the grocery store. And I just mixed up a rather mild solution of that. And uh, you have to warm it up to dissolve the alum in the water. And then uh, you just keep working at that until it forms this uh, chocolate color on the positive terminal. And then it goes to a gray color on this side here. And it's a storage battery. It's a real full-blown rechargeable storage battery. And what you do, it's about a volt and a half. And you use a couple of double A's. I've been using this little solar cell here in the sun, and that worked really great. And then I made another one using um, lead sinkers. One of these lead sinkers. And that worked. So anyway, um, here again, that's a chocolate color on the positive, and then the gray on the negative. You know, let's just listen to the penny oscillator here. Let's see that or not. I, I was just uh, tickled pink, and this is uh, John Bedini and Chuck H. have worked on this, and uh, several other people have tried to convert the other batteries, the big batteries, but before I spent the money, I thought I would try it on a very small scale, and man, it worked. It worked really, really good. That will run for half an hour on a charge up from that solar cell right there for about uh, 20 minutes of sunshine. I get about half an hour run time on that little motor that's drawn about 10 to 20 milliamps. And a little penny over here, she's running at about, uh, oh, I guess about half a milliamp is all, not much. And I have much smaller surface area on these little sinkers here. But I, it was the only thing I could think of to get the lead real quick was to go to the big five store and, and get some sinkers. <laughs> but uh, if I made these into plates um, with more surface area, this would have more, um, amper hour rating. So anyway, I just really uh, wanted to pass this on that you can make your own little um, storage battery using uh, this solder. If you can find the 50-50, I think that's 50% lead, 50% tin. It will not work with the 60% tin and 40% and lead. It does not work. But if you go 50-50 or even higher in the lead, thing worked. Worked really, really good. So anyway, I just want to pass that on, that uh, uh, this uh, contention that you can uh, make a storage battery using alum and distilled water and lead as the anode and cathode and get the reaction to go both directions without deterioration does work. And I have, I have cycled this probably more than almost 20 times in the last two days to see if this actually was working and uh, every time I do it, it gets stronger. 
So, and I'm not seeing any deterioration. There's no deposits falling off. Um, if you zap this with too much current, uh, it bubbles, it electrolyzes. So um, you have to keep the current down on it, but uh, that thing puts out about 70 milliamps at about three and a half volts. And you need, uh, you need three volts to charge these one and a half volt cells. So anyway, just wanted to pass that on that this was highly successful. And before you guys buy the big batteries and spend a lot of money, you might spend a couple of bucks on solder. <laughs> you can find that 50-50 and give this a whirl. Thanks for watching.